Today's episode of my Myths, Legends, and Folklore series is a curious one because it's not a topic many people have heard of before. When we hear the word prosecutions, our minds typically go to the witchcraft trials and or the religious persecutions of the 16th and 17th century, right? Well, today I have one for you that you can add to that list of thoughts that come to mind when somebody says prosecutions. Werewolves. Have you ever heard of the werewolf trials and prosecutions? Well, beginning in the 1400s, according to sources that I have come across, there were they were as popular as the witchcraft trials. I will list my sources in the description area below. So I, I came across these sources when researching the witch, witchcraft trials in America and Europe. And this blew my mind because this means that these people must have seen these werewolves, right? I mean, they would have in order to suggest that their next door neighbor, for example, can morph into the werewolf, right? Wrong. It is borderline ridiculous what I have come to find so far in my research. So those who were accused of being a werewolf were mostly men. And these men that were accused were typically men who had actually committed heinous crimes like murder. And these were also people who had admitted to being a werewolf. They believe they have the ability to transform into a wolf and still have the same thoughts and awareness as if they were still human, hence the name werewolf. 1521 France experienced something odd in regards to the accused. The ones who confessed of being a werewolf had similar stories about their journey to becoming werewolves. For example, two men accused, Pierre Burgot and Mitchell Verdon, stated in their trials that they had made a deal with the devil through servants dressed in black. Knowing that these men were struggling with putting food on the table at the time and their crops had been dying, the men in black had offered them a way to have plenty of food. The men in black gave these struggling men, in two separate occasions, mind you, a magical potion or salve. If they used it, they would become a werewolf with superhuman-like abilities. Confused yet? You won't be for much longer. These men claimed to have formed into a werewolf and became so insanely hungry, they hunted and slaughtered people. Now you get it? My thought is, who the hell was the men in black? Because it sounds like these men were just poisoned. Well, my gut was right. Turns out that one of the ingredients listed in this magical potion was a fungus called wolf's tooth. This fungus grows on rye in rye fields. Funny thing is, German folklore is linked to rye fields. In German folklore, which doesn't sound like war to me, but fact, <laughs> is that there was said to have been a wolf that would stalk those who would go into the rye fields and then they would be attacked. Sounds more like a wolf hunting prey in their territory and eating their food. Just so happens that it, it was eating humans and didn't care if it were women, pregnant women, children, or the elderly. They're animals and will eat whatever's in front of them when they're hungry. Oh, the magic. However, Germans didn't believe that this was just a normal wolf. Of course not. It had fiery red eyes in the dark and therefore it must have had magical powers and it must be evil, right? If that's the case then, all of our pets are evil demons of Satan. Get rid of them. Well, the French thought the same thing. When word got to the church that werewolves were terrorizing Europe, the Pope at the time in 1521, Pope Leo de' Medici, gave permission for them to begin torturing, capturing, and executing these werewolves because they were demonic dogs of the devil. Wolves never used to be seen as evil creatures of the devil. Archaeologists and researchers believe that our view changed of the werewolf in the 16th century. According to trial records at that time, more and more people were being convicted and prosecuted for being werewolves. Some court records can be found in Lambeth Palace, London. It's a beautiful medieval library that holds a 500-year-old record of a man named Peter Stump, who was convicted and put to death for being a werewolf. It provides images and gruesome details of murders said to have been done by the werewolf and also torture. Research and archaeologist Alex Puskowski believes that the reason why we see a large amount of werewolf persecutions, enough to rival the amount of witch persecutions in my opinion, is because of the church. No surprise there, eh? And like how the church is so famous for creating art to depict everything from what they love to what they hate, like depicting the werewolves in the pits of hell, these new images 
were placed in the minds of the people of Europe. So they learned through these new and religious images that wolves equal demons. Werewolves weren't always a sign of evil or witchcraft. In Sweden lies a 900-year-old stone slab of ruins depicting a hybrid creature of man and wolf. Archaeologists suggest that it's a depiction of a Viking werewolf warrior. A wolf was seen to the Vikings as a symbol of power and strength. By wearing the head and fur of a wolf, they believed that they would harness the power of the wolf and transform magically into a werewolf to help in defeating their enemies in battle. This is similar to the story of Viking Lord Harald Fairhair and his conquest in Norway when he and the legendary wolf Vikings faced a massive amount of enemies, an army in the thousands. Fairhair only had himself, a small group of wolf Vikings. These Vikings wore the head and fur of a wolf and nothing else, believing it would provide them with the ability to turn into werewolves. It was because of these legendary Viking wolf men that Fairhair was able to successfully conquer Norway. So what this is telling me is that during that battle, a handful of insane bloodthirsty Vikings without armor destroyed all those enemies. How embarrassing to the enemy. So before the werewolf and witch persecutions in Europe, their werewolf was a symbol of protection, power, and strength. So there you have it, my friends, our embarrassing history of the werewolf trials. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. And hey, before you head out, don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, as always, keep loving history and stay curious. Bye.